Hello, welcome to the start of the review of the Fosse V3 Monos. I'm in kind of a rush since they want this out for the 20th, and I'm agreeing that if I'm going to talk about these amazing little monoblocks, i got to do it, like, today. And I'm going to... I'm just hammering all the features and things, and I'm going to swap op amps because I have these Auracel, uh stereo op amps, and there's two op amps here per monoblock, which means four damn op amps per monoblock, which doesn't make sense since the ZA3 was only a single stereo op amp you need to swap. But we're going to go with it. Since they're here, there's also that op amp there, but I don't know what that does. I messaged them. And um, hold on, because they've already blown my mind. Let's see what else they could do if I throw a little more money inside of them. All right, Fat Boy Slim, don't let the man get you down. Welcome to the review section, and this is actually the second take. So I put the op amps in the Fosse V3 monos, and then halfway through the review, I'm like, you know what? I got to show up the RC inputs and how that could be used as a secondary source. So I'm like, I'll review the SMSL D6S, which I sent, sent from APOS, I believe, with the Senpai sticker on it. And I'll talk about how amazing SMSL DACs have become. And here's your little remote, and this is $200. And I'm like, well, wait, let's pull out the Flamingo, which is the Aoun Flamingo, which is a little headphone amp, pre-out, RCA, with coaxial and USB and Bluetooth, which I took the Bluetooth antenna off because I was getting noise, even though I was on coaxial digital. Take the Bluetooth antenna off your devices if you're not using them, um, which screwed up my whole review. But I could use this, using World's Best Cables, into the RCA inputs on this, which, by the way, have switches for gain control so that you can better match your source to what an XLR is doing. So now I've got one of the better, like SMSL can't fucking miss all of a sudden on DAX. And I know, you know, Zio's DAX sound the same, but yeah, SMSL DAX all sound the same. And they're all better than most other DAX. We'll get to the topping. I have the D90 Mark III. I haven't like A beat it in a near field speaker situation, by the way. Triangle Antal 40th anniversary. Um, I've tried to film the review for this twice, and twice it got screwed up. Either first time this new DJI, or well, the original one had a problem with the noise in the right channel, which is why it's mono on my desk. This new one doesn't. That's why we're in reverse stereo. Don't question it. Um, and the second time, the angle was just completely wrong. I have to manually adjust the angle and film, and then it's like, I don't know what the hell is going on. So I will refilm that review, and you'll get the Antals. Currently using them in near field, which is... Highly recommended, honestly, because if you can afford $5,000 fucking speakers that look like that and put them on the side of your desk and use your little MacBook and then fucking do it. Now, let's fill out the rest of the thing you need to make this fucking magic happen. So, two sources right now, a tube pre and a solid state amazing little DAC. We've got the absurd selection power supply. So, here's the thing. I messaged Fosse yesterday saying, hey, I'm going to film this today because the video has to come out tomorrow. It's currently the 19th of April. This video, hello, is the 20th of April. YOLO, 20 April, go watch uh, Gushing Over Magical Girls. That's your tennis hand, and it's the only wallpaper I want to use ever for the rest of my life. I asked them what the price was on this, because like, hey, the Kickstarter's coming out, get your thing, so you can have an affiliate link for the Kickstarter, and, so you can and I'm like, great, I'll get it all set up. And then I went, oh, fuck, I don't know what these cost. Because if you whip out this, the original OG Fosse V3, non-monoblock stereo, this thing's like $90, sometimes cheaper. And that was with the, the lower, the lesser power. So why you spent more on the power supply was like 50 bucks extra. So now, if we make this monoblock using two of the things still bridge because I needed two op amps, but we take off the volume pot and then you offer it with either a five or 10 amp monster brick, which by the way, you only need one of these power supplies, the 10 amp, 48 volt 10 amp to run two of these monoblocks because they include this wire, which is really freaking nice. And so I'm like, well, wait, okay, cool. Uh, how much does it cost? And they didn't get the memo fast enough and instead sent me this, which I will zoom in which is just every the breakdown of all the tiers of you're going to be able to buy this on Kickstarter right now. If you click the link in the description, thank you for using my link to go to Kickstarter in the description. 30% off if you get two of these amplifiers plus two 48 volt 5 amps, which I guess is the smaller version now. But I could just barely read. It's completely crushed. Is that 48 volt 5 and a t-shirt? So I have no idea what the cost is still. 
I'm still back to guessing. So that's a smaller one. Then you have the 10 amp, which you can get the splitter on. So you could have one power brick and two amps, which is probably the way I'd go about it. Because I was running both of these yesterday with just one of these. And this didn't even get warm. So it's not like you're dragging enough power out of it unless you're like literally just grounding out and trying to do arc welding with the amplifier. Then you can get like the look, oh, just one. I don't know why you'd need just one and one power supply. I'm the only person that needs that because of my vertical TV upstairs is a mono setup. So if you're into the mono solution, you can get that. Then you've got two and two 48 volt five amps without a t-shirt. And then three, because just like the ZA3 is right there. Hello, Fossey ZA3s, how you doing? Those control the front three of my home theater. You do need a receiver with pre-outs to do that. And honestly, I'd swap to these instead of the ZA3s and then use the ZA3s as a stereo amp somewhere else because these are purpose built. I should explain, we'll, we'll go over the rest of this and I'm gonna explain what the fuck you're even looking at because why are they selling three packs and four packs and two packs with one thing and then four packs with two things and then two packs with two things and then bare unit Bare unit is going to be great because then you can just build your own fucking power supply that can handle like probably four amps times 10 if you want 10 channels. So you'd have 40 amp, 48 volt power supply that Dan's getting rock hard thinking about it. And they also offer with speakers. So I still don't know the fucking price of these amplifiers, but I'm going to take an educated guess. I've been getting good at this. I'm saying bare amp, no power supply should cost you $80. Here's the amp. Boom. And then you can get the one amp with a big power supply. This combo here would probably be 140 bucks, 150. Let's say 150 for one on one. So if you add that on, so I'm gonna say what I've got here with one power supply, one bigger power supply, 200 to 210. That's my guess. Keep in mind, this is just a guess. You're gonna find out when you go to the Kickstarter and see how fucking wrong I am. And then like no one needs to do what I'm doing here with two amplifiers and two powers, two full, 10 amp power supplies, that's dumb. It's dumb and stupid and you shouldn't do it. Put this remote here. Um, let's look at the units, because I didn't do that in the previous recording of this. I didn't even do that till like the end, and I got super fucking distracted. You have a switch in the front. It literally is on auto, which is a 10 minute sleep, so if nothing plays for 10 minutes, it'll click and shut off. And then when you play something, it'll probably take a few seconds before it goes click, turns back on. But these things get really fucking hot. So you kind of want them to turn off, like they get hot, like they have vents in the sides. And I would almost seek out an active cooling solution if I had like eight of these on a shelf for doing home theater. So you got auto or on, on is forced on, and then you have XLR and RCA in the front, which is how I'm able to switch between this being my source or this being my source. Now they're both coming from the same computer, but let's just say you had an old vintage receiver or a, a, a shit, tube preamp and you want to hook up your turntable to it so you could have your shit turntable hooked up to your tube preamp all analog and then rca into each one of the amplifiers and then when you want to listen to your tube you go they go click click and now this is your source or that is your source so your amplifiers themselves have a source selector so now if i play <laughs> fat boy slim don't let the man get you down I'm hearing it through a little tube pre. And then if I swap it up, because I don't want to get arrested. Basement jacks, back to the wild, the jacks extended mix. Maybe I don't want to hear this on the tube. Maybe I want a little more clarity. You flip these. Now the XLRs are being used, so now this is my source. You do have to physically flip the switches, but the flexibility of that alone. And then, it got so much cleaner and more like direct, holy shit. And then, here's the back. Power in from whatever power brick. Uh, I've got these nice RI cables from Italy, which cost more than probably everything on this desk. Um, even though it's the lowest tier. But if I have them, use them. Going out of the little five-way binding post, we've got uh, world's best RCA and XLRs. And you can see the RCA right here has a switch for either 31 or 25 dB. So you've got a gain. So if you're using a turntable, you can put it to 31, get a little more out of it. I'm using a tube pre, it's a little bit quieter, get a little more out of it. If you're finding your source is too loud on RCA, you could lower it down. You could either, you could try to match, bring it up to XLR level, so you're not having a big swing in volume. It's just, again, flexibility, flexibility. 
This is, this is, these amplifiers somehow are more flexible than a Romanian gymnast. And it took me a second to think of that joke, and I'm not sure if it's okay for YouTube. But we're going to stick with it, um, because who doesn't like gymnasts? This and this are hot. They're the hot shit. And they are, I would say, one notch below, like, Stark Rims and Monos. And Stark Rims and Mono Blocks are $2,000. They're made in America, so you're going to pay the made in America tax, or at least they're made in North America. I think they're partially assembled. I think he's actually part making the Mono Blocks, and those are ones that are defunct now. There's new ones with the power supplies built in. But those have distortion numbers that range to like the 100th of a percent. Nothing beats the Stark Rims and Monos as far as I'm concerned. Those are also 10 times the price of probably a pair of these. This distortion is something interesting I want to talk about. We've taken our tour. We can now go back to this. So here's the Kickstarter hasn't launched. This, this page, this is the page on Fossey Audio, I'll link it, where it talks about how it is apparently a PFFB amplifier, which means post-filter feedback technology. No idea what that means. I'm not that smart. Also, I have the gain uh, higher on this camera because I forgot to change the audio gain. So hopefully me yelling doesn't disturb, distort anything. But you see how right there it's rated for 240 watts? And for most Class D amplifiers, which is what this is, when you say, cla when you say 240 watts, that means, yeah, it can do that, but it's going to be absurd amounts of distortion. And then I scroll to the bottom where they have the actual graphs. And if you go to the very first one, it says 240 watts. 1% distortion. I'm like, well, that seems relatively low. Usually, you know, the, the Star Crimson's are a hundredth of a fucking percent distortion. But 240, which is rated power, 1%. And then I click next. These will actually do 300 watts per channel into a forum load. But that's a 10% distortion. But they're not average. You don't understand the, the, the restraint required by Fosse as a, a Chinese fucking amplifier manufacturer not to tell you the maximum wattage and instead to tell you the rated wattage at one percent just i don't think it's ever happened look, go look at sony fucking amplifiers like sony receivers they're so proud of their one percent distortion it's like you shouldn't be because we know that's not what you're going to be at um so yeah this is they're advertising 240 by the way the sign ad for those of you who are the big sign ad memes 101 db but yeah, you, you've got all sorts of shit in here. Op amps, they got a 10 minute shutoff timer. They're talking about the cooling solution. They have a really nice, whoever's doing their page layout for them is really, really good at it. They're showing home theaters with like five of them on the blocks. It's like, that's so, that's exactly what I would do. It, it, this is exactly how I would do it. Load dependence defeating, overcoming the pain point of class D amplifiers. Reduces output, filter impact, boosts frequency response for balance, natural tones, ensuring true reproduction. What are we looking at? Oh, for eight? Yeah, you see the spike's going to start go up, starting to go up. That's why we don't plug headphones into these anymore. Uh, Golden Sound uh, was nice enough to do the research into what the fuck happens when you plug a 150-ohm load into a Class D, and it's not pretty. Back to the amplifiers, or the DAC, or the Flamingo, or this keyboard, by the way. This keyboard is the uh, key tr Epo Maker uh, EK68, and I don't pull it out enough. I got to explain to the people who have no idea what I was watching. This is your first year reviews, and I always assume there's one person at least watching every video that's the first time. Hi, I'm Zeus. I do reviews on audio shit. I've been doing it for years, and sometimes I got to explain things because this is not normal. These are a power amp monoblock. That means they're amp for one channel. That speaker gets one amp. And the fact that it's a power amp means there's no volume knob on this. There's a gain switch for the RCA, but that's it. Whatever is being fed into this gets amplified to the maximum and is put out there. So you need to control the amount of signal going into them before the amplifiers. And you could do that on a computer. Like you could just go to FUBAR and lower your volume down. But the problem with that is I don't trust software volume controls. At any point, you know, you could just accidentally restart. It's a Windows update. Windows goes from, like, my master volume was down here, which, uh, hold on, let me just wake this up. My master volume was down here, but now it's up here because the Windows restarted, and then you're going to get the full tilt fucking earth-shattering power of these amplifiers immediately. So I prefer a knob that exists in real life that you can turn down. 
These are both digital knobs and it could again screw it that way, but I feel like it's better. Now the balance connections we've got going to this SMSL D6S, which SMSL is just blowing the bell curve on like quality sounding DACs. And now that I can actually test the differences between DACs, it's kind of hilarious how good SMSL is at it. Like right now better than topping, but I haven't sat down near filled with the topping D90 Mark III and I will. And then I'll tell you if that is the, the, the bee's knees. But I would trust this $200 amp, or this $200 DAC, and these pr presumably $225 for this setup amps in any listening room at Axpona or Munich. If you if I, if you didn't tell somebody, if you put like $50,000 in rack, I'm saying $50,000 in equipment, that would be like one thing. If you put $300,000 in equipment in, in the front of a room at Expona and you put some quality speakers there that need like 150 watts to drive and then you slipped this underneath the carpet and just ran it off this, I don't think anyone would fucking notice. That's how good these monoblocks are. Now, I don't think there's going to be a rush. You audiophiles are going to... I know the people. I literally... I, I work with them every day on the patronage chat for $10 a month. Those are the people who are going to buy these amplifiers immediately. The other people who are like, should I get into the Zeos? If you want to qualify, you want to have a conversation at a water cooler with your friends, and they're all like, hey, I bought this speaker, or hey, I bought that. You tell them you put monoblocks in to power your desk computer or your desk setup, they will take note of you. They'll be like, oh, you're an interesting human individual. By the way, I've, uh, I think this might be one of the better near field setups I've ever had. And I, I only wish that everyone could just experience what this triangle $5,000 stupidity sounds like here, because it is actually hilarious. Like the, like the, the imaging is perfect. And now those are like at the perfect height for where my head is right now. Let's in fact, switch them over. Now we're going RCA input for that. And it's just softer. Just I could tell there's a tube in it. Um, the op amp swap, not required. I might even take them out because I think I shoved into for $15 a piece. So there's there's $60 in op amps in these. It's $30 on this side, $30 on this side. And I don't think coming off of the Texas Instrument. Uh, op amps was a huge difference. Not a huge difference, but again, I know the people who are going to buy this are the people that are in my ten dollar chat, and there you bet your ass they're going to swap op amps. They're going to go to fucking burst and be like, I need some SS swap op amps to put in these, and you'll hear some difference. I just haven't tried enough speakers in enough locations for enough time to know if they are absolutely like bees knees game changing or just something you do to make yourself feel better because keep in mind like these texas instrument ones if they're a dollar a piece they're a lot so you know they're getting them in bulk you might want to try maybe opening them up there's the two screws on the bottom two two millimeter hexes on the bottom which detach the heat sink from the case which is why it's so warm and there's two in the back and you pull the face plate and you pull out the back and you swap the op amps you put it all back together be careful not to get the um thermal paste on your hands or on the desk or to wipe, wipe it all off because you do need that thermal paste making contact to the bottom of the unit. Um, I, I kind of want a fuckload of these to put in my home theater. I would get rid of the Emotiva 7 channel, which is currently doing my four rears and two ceilings. I would just say, screw that. Why would I bother? I could sell that to $700 unit. Can I get seven of these? These will be... I, Hand to God, these will be better amplifiers than almost anything Emotiva makes, maybe except for their biggest monoblocks. I, that's fucked up to say because I love Emotiva. But I think that Fosse is just moving faster. Like, Emotiva will come up with a new amp every three years. And they put a lot of money and a lot of effort. A lot of, they put big components into it. But Fosse is just like... This now, this now, 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 this now, now, this now, now, Japanese and German. All the components in this, by the way, most of them are not made in China. The capacitors that you saw at the beginning, those are Japanese. The relays are German. Like, they're putting good parts that probably don't cost a whole lot into this to make it correct, to make it like... They, they know their market. 
is not just Joe Schmo walking into Best Buy. You are finding Zeos's video to assume how good these are. And Zeos is telling you how good they are. If I haven't, they're fucking great. Like, I could just sell those vintage Marantz monoblocks, because these will kick their ass. As far as cleanliness and power, yeah, no, those, Mar those like, 30-pound Marantz don't have a fucking chance. They don't have a chance. Those are from the 90s, man. This is technology on the blistering edge. The only thing better than this is the Stark Remsons, which are, again, made in America 10 times the price, but that's, that's going to be the cost. We, we are catching up so fast with, like, the be-all, end-all audiophile shit for, like, no money. This is essentially no money. Anyone who's, who's ever put together a real stereo system is like, they got like five or six grand away in their brain. It's like, all right, I need this amp, I need these cables, I need this, this this speaker and this sound dampening in the room. You could like, every five or six years, I feel like you could chop that number in half. You want a kick-ass stereo system? It's now 2,500. And another five years, it'll be 1,200. We're at the point now where if this is 250 and if this is 200 and you didn't get that, this is $400 in source gear that's pushing $5,000 towers as good as they'd ever fucking need. Although I think I like these with a little bit of class A, so maybe you just get the Flamingo instead of that. And the amazing, which by the way, linking in the description, you're not going to see a separate review of this deck, the D6S uh, with the Senpai stick, which, oh, I was also pushing out to the uh, subwoofer, but then I decided to not. When I was using these, the absolutely absurd Micah MB42 G2s, review incoming. Um, I think they needed a sub, so I threw that in there. Yeah, uh, Fosse V3 monoblocks are everything I hoped they'd be in more. Let's put it that way. They are... They It's like the Heath kit. Well, I'm, I'm dating myself because I didn't even have one of those. I just know it from my father. It was like, you got a Heath kit amp and you put it together. Those were like Radio Shack things that you would get and you'd assemble it and it would be cheap and affordable and you get to experience things. There. Fosse's done most of the work for you, but you can have like a, <laughs> I'm imagining like a six-year-old kid going, Daddy, Daddy, I want a monoblock amplifier set up like you have. And Daddy's got like Krell amplifiers and your son gets these little guys and he puts them in his little toy box and they're like, oh, I'm going to pad my speakers. And it's a better fucking system than the Krell that his dad's fucking around with. That's, that's the end goal. So let's see, we're on RC, we're on here. Let's, uh... Play Burning Inside for Static X. I I haven't gotten anywhere near the loudest. I, I can't even fucking touch. I'm in the 50s on the XLR, and I'm at 85 out of 99 on this with the, the higher gain mode set. I haven't heard anything that even resembles distortion. That's usually the thing when you're pushing a speaker, and I've had harder to drive speakers than these, obviously MB42s, RB42s. Um, I actually had the JBL Studio 530s, my, my babies, Studio 530s were on these, and I was like, am I going to blow them up? I really don't want to blow them up, because they're hard to drive. They need all the power in the world, and I just couldn't mentally push them that hard. So I think you're going to see a lot of these in the future. I'll be bouncing between the Stark Rimson Monos and these for like, hey, if you're a normal person with normal budgets... I'll test speakers with this. And if you're a person who's like beyond that, Stark Rimson's to test and get the actual like full maximum I think you can get. So yeah, SMSL D6S is... All SMSL DACs now are amazing. I didn't actually show you this, so let me show you. RCA outs, XLR outs, coaxial in, fiber optic in, Bluetooth antenna again detached, USB-C input. I've got this absolutely absurdly large power plug. Doesn't come with that. Kind of boring on top, so I put the Senpai sticker. Then it's got that screen that's like slightly detached and raised that gives you a lip here. I don't understand it, but you know what? I don't hate it either. Plus, when you turn it off, it's got this like the, like the actual material of the front matches the material they're covering the screen with. So it just looks like an inert piece. And then you turn it on and there's a thing and it says what it is before that. And then you can go, there's not much in the functional menu. Anyway, Bluetooth. Oh, that just switches to Bluetooth. Hold on. Get the input back. Optical is what we're on. And then we go to middle button. We'll show either optical or 96. It wouldn't show volume constantly, which is kind of annoying. 
but how do I get to the menu? Hold on. There you go. Uh, filter 7. I don't care about filter settings. Uh, DP, which is usually 5. I have it set to 3 because I have a good source. Uh, backlight is like 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I don't tell any difference between 4 and 8. It's the same. So you can put it to like 4. And then back to optical. That's it. That's your settings. This is a very, very basic fucking good DAC. People are like, I just need a good DAC. If you want the Flamingo, go watch my video on the fl Flamingo. Because this thing... I mean, I could literally switch it from a tube pre to a solid state pre with the remote, which looks like this, and then control the volume. So yeah, 100% fucking recommend the V3 monos. How could you not? How could you not? What's the flaw? Other than being warm, and I, I, I don't know how well they're going to cool themselves down with just the side holes, but the, the box is certainly acting as a heat sink. I got to give them that. They've, they've, they've worked out how to get the heat out of the unit. You don't need two massive power bricks. You can deal with just one, or you can deal with two smaller ones, depending on how you want to set up your room. If your monoblocks are far apart, if you have them on each side of the room, you'd obviously get two smaller power supplies. If they're on a desk, if you're doing a desk setup with these, number one, you're a boss. Number two, get one of the tens, put it behind your desk, use a splitter. That's it. They're, they're fucking great. I hope my guesses on the prices are correct on the Kickstarter. If they're not, Come and shame me in the comments. I love the interaction. Uh, $5 a month, patrons can support me. You'll get to see my trip out to Axbana, which I was just talking about. Uh, on the main channel, there will probably be something very trimmed down because Expona is a two-channel show. There's music playing all the time. So the unedited version of the show will be available to patrons, uh, although it will be free after a few days. Um, and then I have a second channel video, which is my trip out through Ohio, watching the eclipse, just hanging out at Airbnb with my friends, and then things we did around, um, Expona, like Exotica, but that, I don't know where the fuck that footage is going, that was a nightmare, no one wants to go to Exotica in Chicago, don't do it, Jersey one was way better. And then there'll also be the panel I did at Expona on the second channel, so check out Z's second channel for that, or Zio's second channel for that. Yeah, Patreon subscribe to support this channel. And help me go on trips, and when I need to buy things, I could just buy them, so I don't have to fucking worry about, well, I don't run out of RCA cables. So, Patreon subscribers are follow us a month, see reviews early, participate in yard sales, uh, hear loss of sound demos, and I'm going to be doing a a question, a, a monthly questionnaire, where if you throw some, I'll throw a, a post, and you get to ask me questions in the comments, and then I will answer them in a private video, or a private live stream, I haven't decided which one that is. I also haven't made that post yet, so if you haven't seen it, that's why. Um, I'm trying to work out because I'm going to Munich next month and I want to figure out when I can do things. And then for $10 a month, behind the scenes private Telegram chat um, where you can ask me questions directly all the time, every day. And then you get into a lifetime swap meet channel where you can buy, sell, and trade gear. So if you did buy ZA3s and you're like, you know what? I don't need the stereo version with the mono switch. Sell those, buy just a straight up V3 monos and be done with it. So yeah, and you're in that for life. You're in that swap thing for life. Uh, wallpaper, available in the wallpaper uh, horde, which is a Resilio Sync thing. That is just a screenshot from gushing over Magical Girls. <sighs> what a great show. Anyway, I'm going to sit here and listen to some more music. Actually, I'm going to rearrange this so that I could... Come on. I just want to listen... To Stokovic on the tube, and I'll talk to you guys later. Jesus.